day. Another 12 days of Minute Women Christmas. We're back. So exciting. Just here to sprinkle joy all over your day. Would you write letters to Santa Claus? Yes. What would you do? Would you actually mail them? Yes. We didn't mail them. We would burn them. What? I know. I don't know why. <laughs> we did mail them a couple of times. I do remember mailing them. Burned every- them? Yeah, in our fireplace. Santa's not serious black. He's not coming for your letters in the fireplace. He's magic. <laughs> okay. I don't know. It was like part of my mom's family tradition that they All would right. burn their Santa letters and then the ashes would go up the chimney and then they would go to the North Pole and they reassemble and then Santa gets your letter. That's really nice. Which I was like, well, he's magic. That makes sense. Sure. We did mail them a couple of times, but yeah. I do remember a couple of years very vividly, like throwing our letters in the fire and being like, okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm trusting you. Like, <laughs> it takes a lot of faith to burn your Christmas letter. Sure does. No, uh, no, I mailed my letters. And you would mail them to his address. Yeah. Which is the North Pole, H0H0H0. H0 H0 H0. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Do you know how Santa Claus got his postal code? Which is a true I don't. official designated postal code in Canada. Yeah, I don't know. So postal codes are one of those things, again, where I'm like, I can't imagine the world functioning without postal codes. But they are shockingly recent developments. Really? So in 1925, Toronto was the first place in Canada to be like, we need a postal code. Yeah. And they didn't really even have postal codes. They just numbered zones within the city. Huh. So there would have been like a bunch of different districts. And so, for example, you could write a letter to... 37 Bloor Street West, Toronto 5, Ontario. Okay. So you would have had like Toronto 1, Toronto 2, Toronto 3, da 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 da. Sure. And that was just in Toronto. Sure. By the early 1960s, other cities in Canada had divided into postal zones, including Quebec, Ottawa, Winnipeg, and Vancouver, as well as Toronto and Montreal. In the late 1960s, however, the post office began implementing three-digit zone number schemes in major cities to replace the existing ones. So they're trying to make it more uniform across the country, and it's still only in major cities. Right. The renumbering took effect the 1st of May, 1969, and it was accompanied by an advertising campaign under the slogan, Your Number Is Up. (laughs) (laughs) Just so threatening. So threatening. (laughs) However, with impending plans for a national postal code system. So, like, at this point, there is not a national system for processing the mail. wild to me. It's so strange. It's like, yeah, to me, it makes so much sense that you would have a national postal service. But nope. It's just, like, city to city. So the Postmaster General, Eric Kierens, announced that the post office would begin canceling the new three-digit city zone system. Companies changed their mailing address at their own expense, only to find that the new zoning would prove to be very short-lived. So this, like, three-number system only existed for a couple of years. So as the largest Canadian cities had grown in the 1950s and 60s, the volume of mail passing through the country's postal service also grew. So there were billions of items by the 1950s, and then tens of billions of items by the mid-1960s. Yeah, that's insane. Consequently, it became progressively more difficult for employees to hand-sort the mail, because hand-sorting mail means that you're memorizing and keeping track of all the individual letter carrier routes within each city. Yeah. This is mind-blowing to me. I never (laughs) pictured a world without postal codes. Like, I'm a little (laughs) mind-blown. No, me too. I'm like, how does that... I'm just thinking, I'm like, how people wrote letters... Johnny McDonald wrote letters to England... And there was just no postal code? No he postal just sent code. it on a freaking whim? Yeah. And it would get there, maybe. That's insane. <laughs> no wonder he was three months late. Letters would get lost in the mail all the time, you have to imagine. What if you have, like, really important info? I guess you just write three letters. I guess. Just copies. I guess. <laughs> it's crazy. So new technology was allowing mail to be delivered a lot faster, and it also contributed to the pressure for these employees to properly sort the mail. So basically, like, now you can, like, print a letter. You yeah. can, like, type a letter and send yeah. a letter. So people are sending more mail, but it's still people hand-sorting the mail when it comes to the post right. office. And right, I mean, right. people still hand-sort mail in post offices. So, like, yep. yeah. In December of 1969, Eric Kierens announced that there would be a six-character postal code that would be introduced, and it's going to supersede the three-digit zone system. Right. Like you said, like, I can't imagine a world without postal it's codes. just crazy. It's just crazy. <laughs> so they set up this new postal code system, and now, you know, everybody has a postal code. That's great. 
As early as 1974, staff at the post office in Montreal were noticing that they were getting a considerable number of letters addressed to Santa Claus, and they were entering the postal system. And those letters were just being treated as undeliverable because they don't have a postal code. Yeah. Since employees handling those letters didn't want the writers, mostly young children, to be disappointed, they started answering the letters themselves. So, like, post office workers were taking the letters on their breaks. They're writing responses and sending them back. The amount of mail sent to Santa Claus increased every Christmas to the point that the Canada Post established an official Santa Claus letter response program in 1983. By 2011, Santa's mail was being handled by 11,000 volunteers, mostly current or former postal workers, at multiple locations across Canada, devoting an average of 21 hours to this seasonal task. I love that. (laughs) Approximately 1 million letters are addressed to Santa Claus each Christmas. These are including some originating outside of Canada. All of them are answered in the same language in which they are written. So if you write in French, it will be responded to in French. That is so sweet. Canada Post introduced a special address to mail Santa Claus, complete with its own postal code. Yeah. So it, you address to Santa Claus, North Pole, H0H0H0. In French, Santa Claus' name is Pierre Noël, and so for them, it is Pierre Noël, Pole Nord, Ash Zero Ash Zero <laughs> Ash Zero, Canada. <laughs> The postal code H0H0H0 was chosen for the special seasonal usage because it reads ho, ho, ho. Oh, oh, oh. You know, Santa's favorite thing to say. The H0 prefix is an anomaly. Really? So the zero in a postal code indicates a rural delivery zone, but H is used to designate Montreal. So it's Montreal is H and then zero, which is rural. Oh. So that, like, is a really contradictory within our postal code service. It's not random. There's actually a lot of, like, coding that goes into those letters and stuff. And so H0 prefix is almost completely empty, with the exception of H0M, which is assigned to the Aquasane Tribal Reserve on the Canada-U.S. border. And it's the only other H0 postal zone in Canada. In 2013, Santa was dragged into the ongoing Arctic sovereignty debate, which we're going to get into in our episode about Santa citizenship. So you can look forward to that. Exactly. Um, I, I'm looking forward to it already. <laughs> and so there's debates around Canada's territorial claim to the North Pole. In response to attacks from conservative MP Paul Calandra, parliamentary secretary to then Prime Minister Stephen Harper, Justin Trudeau at the time was just the leader of the third party liberals. And in response to to Paul Calandra, he said, everybody knows Santa Claus is Canadian. His postal code is H0H0H0. Oh, Trudeau. (laughs) What a little cutie. That's Santa Claus postal code. He lives in Canada. Yeah. Does Peyton still write a letter to Santa? I don't think she did this year. No, that's fair. Yeah. Now it's it's very much associated with Christmas parades. Like yeah. people bring their letters and there's like Canada Post and they'll like take all the letters. They put so. it in. Yeah. Yeah. I never got replies either. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> I mean, I guess before this formal volunteer program, it would have just been like, were you lucky enough to get a cool post office, post worker. office worker who's going to reply to your letter? Yeah. No, yeah. I never got a reply, but. Colin and Aiden would get replies. Still get what I wanted. (laughs) When Colin and Aiden would mail theirs, they would always get replies. That's so cute. Um, I didn't get replies because my mother never mailed them. She kept them so she could see what I wanted. Oh. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Which came to be later on in my life. Yeah, I never mailed them. I have them all. I have them all. Thanks for tuning in for the 12 Days of Minute Women Christmas. We love sharing the holiday season with you, and we hope that we can be a part of your holiday traditions. Yeah, if you want to send us a little Christmas gift, you should rate and review the podcast. Give it five stars. Let us know what you think. And you can tune in tomorrow for another episode of the 12 Days. Thanks. Bye.